So this is a super common exam problem in thermodynamics using the first law of thermodynamics. And I'm going to go through it in detail, but a short amount of time. So yeah, let's just jump into it. So we have a perfect gas, 3.0 moles, initially at 110 kilopascals and 298 Kelvin is heated reversibly. That's important to 325 Kelvin at constant volume, so that's also important. And the question is asking us to calculate the final pressure change in internal energy, energy transfer to heat, and the work. And we're given the heat capacity under constant volume, that's what that V is, and M means it's the molar heat capacity at constant volume, equals 5 over 2 R. Okay, so before we jump into the calculations, it's nice to have a picture of what's going on. So we have this, this container, and the gas is confined in here under constant volume, and we're heating it up, so we're adding energy as heat into it, so the system's gaining energy, and when it gains energy, its temperature goes up. Okay, so that's what's going on. Now, let's solve for the final pressure first, and we're gonna do that using the perfect gas equation, and because the number of moles and the volume is constant, we can set up this relation as P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2 and solve for P2. So that's just equal to P1 over T1 times T2. And now we have everything we need. We have the two temperatures, we have the initial pressure, so we'll plug those in. And when we plug in those numbers, solve for the final pressure, that gives us 120 kilopascals. All right, first one's done. To get this change in internal energy, we need to use the definition of heat capacity. And heat capacity at constant volume equals the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature, holding volume constant. Now, what we want to do is we want to solve for the change in internal energy. So to do that, we'll first multiply both sides by dt. And that's what we have here. Now, I also stuck these m in here these m's. So the internal energy and the heat capacity, those are both extensive properties. So they depend on the amount of substance. When the amount of moles goes up, then these, the internal energy and the heat capacity goes up as well. But if we use the molar heat capacity, then we'll be solving for the change in the molar internal energy. So at this point, we can integrate the heat capacity, molar heat capacity is constant because there's no T in here. It doesn't depend on T in the equation we're given. So it gets yanked out of the integral and we just have the integral of dt, which is the change in T. Integral of du, m, is the change in internal energy, molar internal energy. And we can plug in numbers now. We know what the heat capacity, molar heat capacity is. It's just right here. And we want to use the R that has joules in because internal energy is an energy, so it'll be in joules, joules or kilojoules usually. And we have our change in, in temperature, final temperature minus initial temperature. And if we plug that in, that gives us 561 joules per mole. So that's the change in the molar internal energy. We don't want the change in the molar internal energy, we want the change in the internal energy. And so we don't want it per mole, we want it per three moles. So we'll multiply it by three to give us the change in the internal energy. Plus, 1680 joules. And it's nice to put the plus in here, which signifies that the system gains energy as heat. Okay, so now for the next part, we're going to use the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system. And because there's no expansion here, the volume is constant, so the work is zero. Work for uh, a expansion of a perfect gas is negative nRT ln V final over V initial. Let me know if you want me to derive this. I have derived it a number of times, uh, but since these two volumes are the same, we just have ln of one, which is zero, so there's no work being done. So the energy transferred is heat equals the change in internal energy. Uh, so the energy transferred is heat equals plus 1680 joules. So the system gains 1680 joules of energy. Cool. All right, y'all, good luck on your exams, your midterms, your quizzes. You can do it. Just keep solving lots of problems. Go through these. When you go through my exam problems, pause the video, see if you can answer the question, and then go through it with me. That will help with the learning process. Uh, let me know if you have questions. You don't have to be a genius, but you do have to try many, many questions to do well in thermo, and I'm here every step of the way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.